guys welcome back to the no holds barred network with a special edition of indie talks i'm your host as always the evp giggles the heartbreak chick the queen of the indies and today i'm joined by mcduff say hi you say hi to everybody yeah hey gotta start off the video <laughs> with some positivity well speaking of which this whole project i it's very special to me and I've been working on this for a month and with being able to podcast and be friends with a lot of people that I've supported in the wrestling community, um, I've heard a lot of stories through and I've witnessed a bunch of stories as well with wrestlers and fans and just interactions. Um, and with all the negativity that we see, it seems like a lot of people don't focus on the positive. And I guess he's going to sleep. With all the, with all that, I thought it'd be great uh, to put a whole bunch of clips together of stuff that I recorded with people. People sent in videos, stories, pictures, all amazing things that I wanted to share with you all. So. Everybody who participated in this, I can't thank you enough. Every story melts my heart. So I hope this project melts your heart as well. And yeah, so we're going to get to it. So remember, stay safe and always support independent wrestling. Love you guys. I know you for years and I always see you in the ring with kids, which is so amazing. So, I mean, I love for you to share. I mean, you and me have shared in messages, but I want to bring this to life that other people can enjoy these stories as well. So I'm giving you the platform to talk about some of the best stories that you have in wrestling that people need to hear. Uh, I mean, from day one, it like after you get like the jitters out of your system and everything like that, it you really understand that like it's all about the experience for these kids. And like I understand from like my experiences when I was you know still behind the barricade and like stuff like that, that like those experiences kind of live on with you. So like I always tried to think of something more fun to do than the standard arm around, thumbs up pose when you're doing a photo. So like. I would just lay down on the ground, take a kid, put his foot up on my chest, and I'd sprawl out, and then tell him to start flexing. And, like, it just kind of, like, stuck because, like, the kids take that moment. And I still get messages today, like, from kids from excellence who make jokes that they beat me in the ring, like, six years ago, seven years ago. And the kid's, like, 15 years old, and he's still talking about the time he beat Smiley at an excellence pro wrestling show so the positivity is like is so important to me that's why like i was so excited when you when you announced this project and i just instantly started sharing the posts and i started messaging people it's like this needs to be out there because there's so much positivity that you can get out of wrestling yeah you know i mean wrestling in the ring's fun but when you make those connections it's something special uh one of the other hogs recently we were talking online and he, he just recently started getting out there he messages me he's like dude you don't understand like it's crazy like all these fans keep coming up and taking pictures with me and like they just want selfies and i'm like yeah but just you wait until you start getting birthday invitations and they start making cakes with your face on it and then like you show up at those birthdays and you make connections with the fans and you start to really make like friendships with the families and like really they start to reach out to you to tell you, hey, I did it. I got an A on my test today. Aww. And like those connections, man, like, whew, much more powerful than anything. 
I, I talked to like uh, some of the parents and again, like excellence is another great promotion uh, that I've been to and I've witnessed like you in the ring, getting in the ring, like do a little wrestling or them taking, getting on the rings and you're making these kids day of them just even taking photos in the ring. Like, I think that's been everybody's dream, right? Like even as a kid, like wanting to be a wrestler, right? For you. And here you are, you're actually doing it. So to like give that opportunity to a child uh, is is amazing, and you don't know, like you said, you don't know whose day you make. Or even yeah. like with the photos, like it's so nice. Like my goddaughter, I get to see her with, like taking photos with all the wrestlers. It's just like it's so, and then to see the photos on the wall in the bedroom, like those are cool too. I'm sure you get like a lot of that too. That like you see, like there has to be like those cool moments too that you walk in or like people take photos and show you what they have, like maybe in the bedroom of, you know, on a wall of photographs with you. Oh, absolutely. Like, like people will send me like a picture of their walls and it's from everybody from adults to children. Like I have like people that are like 25, 30 years old and like they have a picture up on their wall of like me and them. And it's like for, some kid from Portland, Maine to be able to make an impact on somebody's life enough that they want to put me next to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. Like, that's a big deal to me. Yeah. So like, that's, that's pretty impactful stuff. And I didn't, uh, there's been some people like I've given them items. Like that was another thing you had mentioned that I, I'm like, I feel attacked because like <laughs> I have a, a yellow mask that like, it didn't really fit me too well. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, ah, I can't really wear, wear this much. I saw a fan and he like really liked my mask. So I'm like, Hey, here, <laughs> take this. Oh, also one kid. I'm pretty sure up somewhere in New Hampshire, New Hampshire, or Massachusetts, who has a tutu that I wrestled in once because it was an eighties themed wrestling event. So I went as the toxic Avenger <laughs> and he just thought the tutu was the funniest thing in the world. So I took the tutu and I gave it to him. And then like, I'll get pictures like years later and it's like, Hey, he still has that tutu hanging up on his wall. <laughs> like, Aww. Like, I love like the memorabilia boxes too, that a lot of people make, like even like with the gear or so, even if like you give something and even if they don't wear it, but it goes into that memorabilia, like shadow boxes, I guess I should say of wearing yeah. like certain gear. Like I've seen that. And I know that even from other parents too, that they do that for their kids. And it's like hung up on the wall, which is yeah. so cool. But I mean, let's talk about like some of the birthday invitations that you have got. Like I have videos <laughs> that you guys can see in this video, which you'll see. But I want to talk with you about some of this experience that you've had of these invitations. Yeah, it's just the kids like they love wrestling. So they want to have a wrestling themed birthday. And for some reason, they think I'm like the greatest wrestler alive and I'm their favorite. So they'll mess the parents will message me and go. Hey, uh, it'd be really cool if you could come up for his birthday. I know you're probably busy. And if I don't, if I don't have anything planned, I'm jumping on a bus. I'll jump on a train and just shoot my way up there. And why not? Like I, some of them are like, Oh, we'll give you like money to come up. It's like, no, <laughs> like the, the expression on his face is going to be enough. The, the clip that you have where I come up out of the box, th that's why it, I, I remember a lot of these kids names too, which is, you know, special. But like little Wyatt, like I popped up out the box and he started crying because he was so surprised. Aww. And like, I just about broke down myself. I'm like, no, don't cry. Like it's supposed to be a good thing. And he was so excited. And they had rented like a, a bounty house that night. Mm -hmm. So like at one point we were, we, he took me into the bouncy house and we had a wrestling match in a bouncy house. <laughs> of course, as per usual, I do the job and I get beat fair and square in the middle of the bouncy house. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, he, he just thought it was special. The, the mom, like, opened up the fridge when I got there, and she's like, look at the cake. And the cake is, like, a design with my mask on it. Right. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, he legit had a smiley birthday party. And the best part is he's turning 15, I think it is, this year. And if all goes well, I'm going to end up at that birthday party, too, um, and he doesn't know I'm coming. Oh, my goodness. Like, <laughs> even, I think it's, like, Eight or nine years later, like, I'm still going to show up to another one of his birthdays, like, unannounced. Those are, like, the moments. Oh, my goodness. Like, this is so cool. You never know who you impact 
right? Like, Absolutely. You, you never know who you impact. And then uh, I think you had showed up at another, what was it? Um, I know you sent me another video or the mom sent me a video of, what was it? Uh, one of the, was it for the cancer? Uh, one of the kids like beat cancer or something. It was one of those pretty sure. Oh, um, yeah. Yes, it's uh, the Keytrid Heat helped me out with that one. Mm -hmm. um, there was there was this fashion show that the like a children's cancer association kind of thing was putting on, and she's like, "Hey, this little boy really wants to be a wrestler. Would you mind like going and doing like a runway walk in your gear with the little boy?" I'm like, "Of course I would." So like, I went out and we, I showed up, and of course he doesn't know who I am because he doesn't know a lot of indies. But like he shows so shy in the beginning and he was so scared. So like little by little, I kept like, you know, making him a little bit more comfortable, a little more comfortable. And then like when we went out there and like uh, he, he went, he walked once with a model dressed in regular clothes to do like a fashion runway. He comes back and he changed into his Finn Balor costume. Aww. So we go out there and he was so scared and he was turned and he looked at me and he asked me to pick him up. I went, Yup. I picked him up, threw him up over one shoulder, and like he clenched on so hard. And then at the end, like he wouldn't like he just kind of stayed nice and close to me. You know, like he 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 got more comfortable, and like it was just like a moment that like was very special. And I keep in touch with the family still. You know, I, I send them messages every now and then, like how's he doing? The other day he he had a cold, so he was doing rough. So I hit up hit up the family. I'm like, hey, how's Noah Ben? How's he feeling? You know. Just little connections like that, that like he had no idea who I was. Right. But now by the end of it, you know, he, he'll post up on his, because he's got a little Instagram, and he'll post up on his Instagram about me and uh, him. And then there's another young lady, um, Sammy Strong, mm -hmm. who I, I uh, discovered through uh, Sumi Sukai's post. And I keep in touch with that family a lot too. And uh, Sammy's another one, she beat cancer mm -hmm. at a young age. So, last September for, yes, last September for uh, Cancer Awareness Month, I had t-shirts made. So they were like, like I had two different designs made by two different artists. So one of them was more like comic book-esque and then there's another one that's more Steven Universe cartoon-esque. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I just kind of surprised the kids and I made t-shirts with them on it. And like, we put them up for sale on my, my pro wrestling tees and like, all the money we donated to charity. So like we, I think we earned something like $400, maybe four or $500 for like children's cancer. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, research and stuff like that. Wow. This is amazing. See, this is why, <laughs> like, again, this needs to be brought to light that I don't think a lot of people really know what goes on behind the scenes and just these stories alone. This is just, Absolutely. it's just amazing. It's just like, Oh, I'm in my feels right now. <laughs> That's so great. Oh my God. More people need to be like this. Like the, the connections we get with these, these fans and like, even sometimes I hate calling them fans because it just sounds so like I, you're only good for watching me perform, but like, no, like a lot of these kids, like they're legit. Like I consider them almost like friends, Yeah. you know, like I would message them out of nowhere just to see how they're doing, you know? Mm -hmm they i see they're doing good in school and i'll send like a message like hey great job on that test that you posted whatever like it's it's a connection that you make with the the people that really make a difference mm -hmm. and really make it worth like the bumps the bruises the long nights away you know the you know 12 hour drive to toronto yeah to go perform on a charity show then at the end of the charity show the fans just unload into the ring and it's like a giant mosh pit of like three and four and five year olds. You know, that's an experience that like they won't forget because like they're in a wrestling ring with the wrestler. And it's an experience I won't forget because you know I got to make that big of an impact on a bunch of people who probably didn't know who I was before that moment. Yeah. Oh my goodness. See, we need more of this at a good, like the impact for these kids and people. Hey, 
we got pitches together. I got pitches with you. So it's like, yep. and I'm pushing 40. And it's like, I got pitches with you. And like, these are moments you impact people, whether, like you said, whether it's a three year old or whether it's a 40 year old, like you guys are all important to us. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, these are so awesome. I love, I love all these stories. <laughs> that may not know me. Uh, my name is Kate. Uh, I'm 18 and I have been suffering with an eating disorder for just over, probably by the time this goes up, just just over a year. Um, and I use wrestling as a way to kind of help me. I've always said that I, since I found out about the eating disorder, I was kind of told that I needed to find a goal. I needed to find a reason to keep going and wrestling became my way pretty quickly. Um, first it was AEW, so it was the likes of like uh, Eddie Kingston, John Moxley and all of them who I kind of went to for an escape um, and then I got introduced to like independent wrestling. I was talking to a friend Luke and he was like, hey why don't you check out like GCW? 
why don't you check out H2O? Why don't you check out GCW? And I was like, okay, I'll branch out. And like, I'll give it a shot. I was very nervous. <laughs> um, but then I kind of went to them and I kind of really enjoyed looking at their products. So I went to them and I constantly, the first match I watched was, I believe it was Ricky Shane Page versus Nick Gage. And I can't remember which one this was but I'm pretty sure it was a, a, a Ricky Shane Page versus Nick Gage. And instantly, me being me, I fell in love with the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, me too. <laughs> I'm all for falling in love with the bad guys. So um, I kind of researched 4 for O, and I kind of researched into who they were, and I fell in love with them quite quickly. So I watched their matches, and... I used them as a way to help me to, to guide to eat. And then I found out that Gregory had a podcast. So I kind of support him through that. And I kind of, I have a close connection with Greg. He's very supportive. I genuinely don't know where I'd be without him. He's helped me a lot. He really has. Oh um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to get emotional. We're not, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, we have like Billy Starks, Kennedy Copeland, uh, Mark Smathers, Bam Sullivan, Sean Henderson, and Nick Gage. Yeah, I will say Nick Gage. Um, all of them have helped me out in their own ways. Uh, Billy has been there for me through some rough things. So is Sean. Bam is someone I go to to watch comfort matches. So I, if I'm really struggling to eat, or like I don't feel like I can do it I'll put on wrestling as a way to help me and all of them I will go to to watch matches for to help me eat um but yeah I don't think it would be possible for me to still be here without these guys so I do owe them a lot and I just wanted to share that with you guys so that's so amazing that when um even if you can go into like dms with these wrestlers i mean all these people pretty much almost everybody that you brought up has been on my under the rope series um or has been in like h2o indie talks episodes with me but it's such a wonderful experience to have that fan interaction uh that you can talk to them and they can help you through this which is amazing uh from, from these guys that they're so important even if they sit here and they'll say like oh no like or they'll sit and being humble right like I'm sure you get like a lot of that that they don't realize what they do uh, so but it's these things that are so important uh, that make us us and what makes them them so thank you for sharing your story. It's funny. I know like Bam had talked about you on the pod too. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's gotta be kind of cool. It looks cool experience too for you as well to like, see like the little marks that you've made in their heart as well as they've made in yards. So. Yeah. Just let him do it. Just let him do it. Get on his back. What? Uh, oh. <laughs> I am not a doggy! Ah! <laughs> ah! Turn him over and pin him! He's so strong! No! Count him! Count him! Count him! Count him! Count him! Count him! Pin me! Pin me! Thank you. Thank you uh, for even wanting to listen to my stories and, and have me share with not only you, but your audience and everyone else who's going to watch this. Um, but I actually, I have some, I have a pretty few cool stories. Um, the first one that I'll start with is back when I was doing ECWA, when I first started with them about two years ago, um, I met Chucky Ireland and his daughter, Chloe, Chloe Ireland. At the time, Chloe was seven. And, um, you know, they became very big fan of my work and of the things that I was doing. And, you know, as the time went on, um, I got to know them and, and, and personally, like their family and stuff like that and, and off the cameras and everything else um, to a point where 
it was Chucky. Um, Chucky's. I'm sorry. It was Chloe's uh, birthday. Uh, maybe like two months ago, and he, you know, he reaches out to me. He goes, "Hey, listen. Uh, do you mind making an appearance for her birthday party?" And I'm like, "I'm like, yeah, dude. Of course, absolutely. Why not?" So then it's one of those things where he's like, "Oh, you know, just tell me what your booking fee is and everything." And I'm like, "Nah, man. That's not what I do this for. I, especially when it comes to kids, because I have a daughter of my own." Um, I, I take very pride of, of making sure that I make time out for the kids and that I do things for the kids with nothing in return. Because to me, um, you ha- you know you have to show everyone that it's you know it's for them, it's for the kids. So when he reaches out to me, he tells me all that stuff. I'm like, look, listen, no, it's okay. I just I just want to come and and you know he lives about close to two hours away from me. Oh wow. Um, so yeah, yeah. So so I make the trip. Um, they have this real cool, like, um, uh, entrance and he had like music and all this other stuff. And it was, so it was really, really cool because her family got to, well, his family too, also got to see me come out and, you know, we're taking pictures and we're taking videos and we're, you know, I have the championship belt with me and, and it was so much fun. So, so much fun. Did they know, like... Did they know that you were Chloe, coming? No, Chloe, no, 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 Chloe didn't know. No, 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 Chloe didn't know. Um, oh. And the thing is, like, when I when I showed up, you know, you see me in a suit and a tie because, oh. you know, that's usually how I'm dressed, like, right. even even right now. I mean, I'm missing the tie, but that's a different <laughs> story. Um, but then, like, like when Chucky sees me, he goes, yo, you're, you're, you're way too dressed up. I'm like, nah, man, this is, this, is, this is my persona. This is what I do, like, all the time. Um, so he kept us like sort of like um, in the living room and I'm trying to like change in the bathroom and I feel like I'm in a locker room without, you know, with everybody <laughs> changing and stuff. And then uh, I, I gave him my music, my entrance music. And once he hit it, her face that she made oh. as I was seeing her, she's like, oh, she goes, oh my God, Ray's here. Oh. And it was so, oh. so it was super dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's all for the kids yeah. sometimes. Yeah, like. all, all for the kids. Oh yeah, all for the kids. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's such a sweet story. Um, so so then here, I, I'll further that story a little bit more. So as I got to know Chucky more, um, again, personally and stuff like that, he reaches out to me one time. Um, I believe it was last year. And uh, he tells me about Valentino, which mm-hmm. is, well, I call him Poppy Val because, you know, I'm a poppy. <laughs> he's a poppy. Everybody, everybody in the indie scene knows exactly who he is, knows his entire family, his sister Bella, the father Matt, the mom Kim. Yeah. Um, this is before I even knew them. Uh, Chucky reaches out to me. He goes, hey, listen, you know, I, I want you to give me some of your merch um, and I'll pay for it because I want to gift it to this family. And he was telling them about me because, you know, they're super huge uh, indie wrestling fans and just wrestling fans in general. Um, and there's a, they're actually one of the good families that, that people want to be next to and they, and they want to share the moments and people want to get to know them because they have so much health-wise going right. wrong that the little bit that we bring to them, it brings them so much joy that no one could ever understand. Right. Um, so, so he tells me, oh, listen, you know, um, just give me some of the merch, whatever, for the next ECWA show, X, Y, and Z. Um, and they're, they're part of Titan Championship Wrestling, which is TCW. Mm-hmm. And at the time, they were going to have a show uh, November 14th. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, my birthday is on November 7th. So I was heading uh, on vacation with a couple of my friends to Columbia. Mm-hmm. And I was coming back like at the 12th or something like that. So I told Chucky, I'm like, look, listen, get, send me her information. So I reached out to her through Facebook, um, and I'm having a conversation with this lady, and I'm like, look, listen, I need to meet you guys. Uh, you know, I, it's not, it, for me, it's not enough that I'm just gonna give you, you know, items. I want to meet you. I want to know. I want to sit down, and have a conversation with you. I wanna, I wanna kick it with you, right, so to speak. Um, so she goes, oh my God, that's, that'll be perfect, and this and that, whatever. Mind you, at the time, I was not part of Titan Championship Wrestling. I was not part of the show. I was not part of the roster. I was not refereeing. I wasn't. I had no affiliation with them whatsoever. And that's almost two hours away from me, from where I live. Mm-hmm. So I took the initiative on my end, um, you know, to get all the merch and all the stuff that, that I wanted to give them and gift them. Mm-hmm. And I took the trip out there to Titan Championship Wrestling. Aww. And And let me tell you, let me tell you, when I showed up, I showed up. Listen, this is this is kind of like a, 
a self-gloating story, but it's also it's true. It happened. Mm-hmm. So I show up, I show up in the Maserati, right? Mm-hmm. And every single person in that parking lot went just like this. <laughs> Who the heck is this guy, right? So then I I jump out of my car with AJ Penn, and when I jump out of the car, I am in a three-piece suit with a tie. I'm looking like a million bucks. And um, I forget the guy's name, but he even he told me, he goes, yo, you sure you're in the right place? I said, <laughs> I said yeah, I'm, I'm here to uh, to meet Kim, Val, Matt, and Bella. And, um, you know, I, I met them, and, and she gives me, like, this big kiss and hug. And mind you, this is the first time I ever meet this lady. Uh, but very welcoming. And, and you know, I'm, I'm Hispanic, so that's what Hispanics do. We, we do the whole emotion and, and how you doing and, you know, all that other stuff. Um, so, I, you know, I'm sitting, I'm having a conversation with her for a few minutes because she's also the photographer for TCW. Mm-hmm. And I know that the show was about to start. Um, so, I, you know, I take pictures with Val, and, with Poppy Val, or Poppy V, as I call him. <laughs> um, and it was so good. And, and he was actually, like, smiling. And it's something that I don't really talk about because I'm not one to do things to publicize to the public, Right. right? I do it more so for me, and I have the pictures, and I never posted them. She, I think she posted them on her profile that I took pictures with with, with Val and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But that's not – I don't do that for the attention, right. you know. Um, I just do it for my own personal aura, I guess, if you want to call it that, right? It's and, rewarding. Um, it's rewarding super. for you. Like, So these are the things that I always say that um, I see as a podcaster and right. – this is what I want to bring to light that I think there are things that people don't know that happen behind the scenes that are so important to the fans, right? Right. Like you just made a connection with a family because you wanted to do that and you made like a friendship and everything like that. And these are the things that I feel are so important that people don't see that mean everything. Okay. So, I'm gonna give you one step further, right? Okay. I'm gonna give you one a, a little we're well, not better because Val is like the top one, but I'm gonna give you something pretty cool. Um I, I also wrestle for ECPW, uh, which I am there. It's here. That's why I have it on display. Beautiful. Uh, I am their current uh, light heavyweight champion. Um so I had uh one of my friends, she came out to see me and she was with her husband and her uh father in law. Mm-hmm. It was his birthday, sixty four four I think he was mm-hmm. if he's gonna watch this I'm sorry if I butchered your age I'm so sorry but <laughs> he's 21 it's, it's cool he's 21 yeah, yeah, he's 21 he's 21 he's 21 so so that was that was pretty cool because for ECPW I actually um when we do adrenaline TV it's actually aired in local cable television up in the Lake Hiawatha and Parsippany area mm-hmm. I think it's channel 77 or something like that um but anyway so she tells me, oh, you know, it's his birthday and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, cool. Let me let me see what I could do to make him feel a little bit special. Because at that age, you know, you know, your kids f- start to forget about you. Your family forget about you. Your friends forget about you. So after my match, um, I had a championship match. So after the match, you know, I, I win and stuff like that. And I have the camera guy follow me. And um, I go over to him. And, um, you know, I tell the whole crowd. It, was, it must have been like 150 people in the crowd. Um, and I tell everyone in the crowd, I'm like, yo, it's his birthday Aww. today. <laughs> and we all just start singing happy birthday, Aww. happy birthday. To- <laughs> Listen, that guy, and that's the first time I met him. Mm-hmm. That guy gave me, like, one of the biggest hugs because, like, you know, he's a big, big freaking guy. Uh-huh. He, he gave me one of those tight bear hugs. And I'm like, all right, man, I can't breathe. Like, let me go, all right? <laughs> you got it. No problem. You got it. So it was pretty cool. Um, I actually have two stories like that. The same thing happened with uh, a good friend of mine, Stella. She she supports in the in the wrestling. She's actually from New York too, mm-hmm. um, so she comes down with her mom, her daughter, her cousin, and she tells me, "Hey, listen, it's my mom's birthday." So I'm like, "All right, great." Same, you know, I did the same scenario, but I gave them some of my merch before the show, so I gave them, you know, my shirts and stuff like that. And then after the match finished, I I, I pull up into the crowd and I I started sim- like like the orchestra. I started doing one of these things and people <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> And it's just it's just so amazing. Uh, the ECPW gives me the platform um, and the green light to even do that because you know how it is in wrestling. Yeah. People be like, oh, no, no, you can't do that. And I'm like, I'm like, come on, man. I'm I'm the face of <laughs> ECPW. Like, come on, you know. So um, it's super cool. It's super cool when I get to do uh, special little moments like that because, again, 
I know that at that age, people tend to forget your birthday. So if I can have that moment with them and just share it with them for even three minutes of, of everyone's time and you just have everyone singing in unison, it's one of the best feelings in the world. Uh, and you made someone feel very special for like yes. the day too, which I feel like yes. are moments yes. that people don't realize actually happen. And that's yes. what I also feel makes the indies very special. So. Yes. Yes. But, but Ray, thank you so much for giving some of your stories. We're going to get you on an Under the Rope series as well. I appreciate you taking the time. So keep I have one it. more story. How are you oh. cutting me off? I got, I got one more story. Okay. Story. Okay, one more story. One more story. That's, that's, the, that's the cutoff? That's the, that's, 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 you give me one of these? You give me one of these? Yeah. Okay, one more story. All right, all right, the last story. The last story. Uh, this is actually a, a very recent uh, thing that, that I was uh, involved and a part of. Uh, from the very beginning was uh, Shane Fair, uh, as you yes, know, him. Yes. Uh, one of the best ring announcers, one of the, um, the the kindest human beings that you could ever come across. Uh, super nice. He asked me to be part of his charity for uh, Mercer League of Miracle League of Mercer County and yeah. my championship belt just fell. You see, not everything is always perfect. <laughs> right here. You see that? And see, now we're going to have to like cut this, edit everything, right? No, but um, so matter of fact, hold on, wait. It's okay. Whatever. So he has me uh, uh, being part of his uh, Mer Miracle League of Mercer County, uh, which we raised over ten thousand yeah. dollars. And I was a big, I was a huge part of that. Um, and it made me feel so good because I got my friends, my family, some of my fans to sponsor me and involved in donating money because I even had a raffle, like to win a date with Ray. This whole thing, like where I would pick up the person in the Maserati and Aww. I would take them to lunch. Yeah, yeah. And, and long story short, my ex high school teacher, she ended up winning. Oh, wow. So she didn't want, yeah, no, she didn't want the Maserati date. Her husband was like, her, her husband's name is Wally. Wally's like, no, you're not, you're not going with him on the Maserati date. Uh, so, no, but, uh, you know, that was, <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, that was a pretty cool uh, charity to be a part of and to see it all come together and for Shane to, because, you know, in wrestling, wrestling is very egocentric. Yeah. Uh, so for Shane to have, over 50 different characters and personas yeah. all together under one roof and all for like one benefit was amazing, amazing, amazing. And he had um, I, um, IWTV cover it in um, internet pay-per-view and, and he had GoPro wrestling there and he had the local media. It yeah, was one of the best things. things. Yeah, one of the best things I was a part of. Oh, so I'm yeah, so glad that, that you were a part of that and Shane's amazing. And Shane will yep. be part of this as well, too. So I'm so excited about that. So Okay. Now you can take it <laughs> But, and it's great because you have the background. Is that like, did you sew that? Like, is that going I on? I did. This is uh, hand-sewn. I uh, made this out of uh, different uh, appliques and fabrics. I, I like to say the fabrics. And, uh, yeah, it's very beautiful. It's a tapestry. I'm going to... Uh, there you go. We need to wrap myself in this later. We need really a cool. we need a cup of tea and we can put our pickies up pretty much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um but anybody <laughs> like I mean this is such a great thing that you did. And anybody who didn't watch this, they should go back and definitely go watch this. But please tell everybody like let's talk about basketball a little bit. Like tell everybody like why did you decide to do it? The charity that you chose, why you chose that charity, like Right. Give us everything. Uh, well, you know, I wanted to, um, first off, the inception was I wanted to get a basketball game together. I wanted to get everybody together. And I knew that if we we're going to use that type of energy, we had to do it for a good cause. We had to uh, do it for a charity. So that was like a chicken and egg. We had, you know, the game. Now we had to look for, you know, a charity. So um, basically a lot of the players that, uh, that were assembled for this game were um, all affected by uh the, the loss of synergy and you know the kind of like being displaced by the uh the closure and everything that went along with that at synergy so um it was essential to get uh that core of people together and uh as fate would have it most of them played basketball so uh, you know like tj crawford uh steve scott like there was a nucleus of uh guys that all played and of course brandon kirk and casey Catal, you know so it all kind of like fell into place so um it was like divine intervention. You know, we had that core from Synergy. Um, now all we needed was a, a charity. So it became um, apparent to me. Of course, Azalea was a big fan and always went Synergy. Uh, all the joy that Miracle League brought her. So I thought, you know, why not use 
the uh, charity that was closest to Synergy in the fact that, uh, you know, one of uh, the fans, you know, was a member of that league. So it all it all was just fell into place. It was all so obvious, you know, like it just, you know, the answers and everything were right there in front of you. You just had to, like, pull them out of the sky. So um, once everything got aligned, we set course to uh, raise $5,000. And that was uh, a lot of sleepless nights en, r- en route. <laughs> yeah, I saw, like, a lot of, like, your posts on social like it's a very Ugh. stressful thing to run a charity event i've done charity events myself outside of right, right. wrestling and it's it's a lot uh, i don't know oh, it's if like a mental is. unraveling you know? yeah <laughs> but come day of like such a fun show and music and people having fun and everything like and then you guys raised over ten thousand exactly. dollars like right did you ever think well you probably like okay five thousand did you think that was a stretch um, I thought, like, you know, I I heavily had to personally finance a lot of aspects of the game. So um, I thought that if we fell short, it was going to call upon me again to kind of uh, make fill in that gap. And that was kind of frightening to me. So there was like a lot of sleepless nights. And I remember um, like confiding in people and saying, you know, no one has donated to the GoFundMe in like X amount of days. And I know it was over a week at some point. It was like, you know, you know, no one's bought a ticket. In over a week, no one's donated to the GoFundMe, you know, and that was scary, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, every day that went by, I remember, I remember, um, there was a time when I'd go to bed, and I'd lay down and say, did I do everything I could to like facilitate this game and make it, you know, something better? Did I do something today that's going to help this uh, to be a better, you know, to sell more tickets or to bring awareness to the game, to bring awareness to the charity, to raise money? Did I do enough? on that yeah. particular day and like every day i'd go to bed i would realize that this brought me one day closer to the event so i wasn't excited about the event coming closer i was right. more fearful that it was you know time was expiring so mm-hmm. you know, it was a very scary feeling and route you know but then like the day of and that's usually how it goes a lot of these charity events it's always that's when everything right. goes off right like tickets were going off like people were donating like crazy you had that, right right you had the screenshot on the the iwtv like that you could just scan your phone to make a donation through your phone that was all gopro yeah that was all gopro's like, idea they're amazing production on that and uh when he know. first told me uh michael james sesco told me that they were going to implement that uh that qr code on screen that was genius i couldn't believe that he went through those lengths and like they all they GoPro really was like the backbone of that whole production that you saw. So like, um, you know, if it looked professional, it was, it was really them, you know, yeah. they, they really were the backbone. So GoPro was so integral to, uh, you know, producing it, but, but it was a, a lot of sleepless nights. And know what else I found out? Like I'm an asshole on show day. I'm one of those jerk promoters. Like I, I'm like, you know, I, I'm unapproachable. I'm a, uh, I'm, I was so disgusted with what it brought out of me. <laughs> But, like, I did have my moments that day to enjoy things. Like, you know what was cool? I was, like, um, facing the wall, and I would uh, give out the jerseys, you know, as, as I pulled them out. Okay, where's, you know, Ariella Nix? I'd go find Ariella and go give her her jersey. Yeah. And I gave them all out, and, you know, the, I had them in a giant suitcase, and the suitcase kind of got empty. And then I turned around, and everybody had them on. Aww. And, like, I hadn't seen – like, I, I it, it happens like uh, – I didn't see the progression of people putting them on like one by one. I was kind of just focused on what I was doing. And when I turned around and saw everyone in the jerseys, it, like it became real. And I was like, wow, this is, it's here. Like, you know, Aww. my baby's born. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> so great. It's like so fun to like see that and just watch everything come together and people being oh. together and doing for charity and, Oh, like, yeah, the jerseys were great to see the photos and right, I right. mean, you should be so proud, oh, thank you know, you. like it's such an amazing accomplishment. I'm all about charity. It's such a oh. it's such a beautiful thing on like the photos again, like Azalea. I'll be holding up the check, like the, the little things that <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I had. Um, I went to Staples and I ordered that check. Right. So. The guy's trying to explain to me how big it would be. And, like, the size kind of fluctuated. He's like, oh, we can't do it this way. We can do it this way. <laughs> so somewhere in the shuffle, this thing became, like, six feet. It was, like, it was obscene. <laughs> so I wasn't trying to be a douche, like, oh, look look at this giant yeah. check. But um, <laughs> I, it just came out like that. And I unrolled it when I got home. I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do with this? Because it was, like, it was two days before I was stuck with this giant check. So I got... um. 
uh, like a foam board, and I cut it out. You know, tongue hanging out, arts and crafts. You know, <laughs> Elmer's spray glue, and I made I fashioned a festoon this giant check. And uh, when I put it in the car, like when I shut, I couldn't shut the two doors. It would like swoosh the check. I had to put it on like a weird like <laughs> angle because it was like the whole length of my car. Like, <laughs> ridiculous <laughs> so ridiculous but it's good memories um, oh definitely now i see you're talking about another one i'm talking about it like i need a i need a mental break like <laughs> i need i need just a little time to like decompress but Maybe yeah a, it's gonna happen again a, a once a year thing possibly or once a year i think i'll be able to keep my sanity somebody's yeah. talking about like a league or something it's like mm-hmm. are you serious like i i yeah. the logistics and ramifications of running a league like i just i want the once a year and plus yeah. i don't want to go to the well too many times i want sponsors and uh you know donors to not feel like we're shaking them by the ankles it's right. just a once a year thing like you know if you could help us out and people oh my god the generosity was when and, and sadly it, it's it's a luxury problem but i can't thank everyone in one clip because I'll, I'll leave people out and it's just yeah. there's so many just gestures i try to like randomly thank people as i can and you know it's yeah. i can never thank people enough for what they did it was amazing beautiful beautiful thing so are you going to do the same charity or are you going to do a different charity every year possibly or great question like you know initially i um i wanted to like just do a different charity each year but i, I we're going to do the miracle league i think one more you know another year for you know for sure and everything like that and um you know that they, they kind of you know for for families of the miracle league players to like see someone that's not from new jersey mm-hmm. you know from staten island taking uh, a group of wrestlers to play basketball to raise money for baseball of course there's going to be like skepticism like what the hell is this about and you know they kind of warmed up to it at the end. And I think the families, like they say, one, one league, one family, uh, you know, they, they kind of accepted it at the end, you know, like they, they realized that this was a good thing. And then, uh, you know, uh, protective parents as they are of their children and rightfully so, like, you know, the, the guard was up and towards the end, they saw that it was a righteous cause. And then what we were doing was positive and they embraced it. And that was like a beautiful thing as well. So, you know, it's a beautiful thing. It, it's cool to see wrestlers, outside of wrestling and i think that was right, like another right. thing as well as because we're so used to seeing them and as a fan people don't realize like that they're like everyday people like you and me right and to see them all these wrestlers together that know each other and then That's here awesome. we go we're doing something for a cause is so amazing like i can't congratulate you enough for what you do uh, thank you so. You know what's great? Like, oftentimes, like, their competitive nature is stifled yeah. because of, like, you know, like, we, we don't have to go into why, but, uh, you know, like, their competitive nature doesn't get to flourish and be on full display. <laughs> and, like, you know, so you had people in this game that were out to prove, you know, their athletic prowess, like, on a, uh, you know, authentic yeah. uh, level. And uh, you saw that a lot, you know, like the Dan Champions, the, uh, you know, Grim, you yeah. know, there was a, that, that shot at the, the end that put the dagger and the nail in the coffin on the face team when Grim ran down court, stutter steps, <laughs> took three steps back, let the defenders pass him and pulled up and hit the game winner. Like, you know, there was so many, like, amazing plays. Uh, Saif Al-Sabah uh, being knocked to the floor by Dan Moff and doing a kip-up. Yeah. When have you ever seen a kip-up in a basketball game? Like, you know, there was so many, like, just memorable moments. And it was hard to process them because I just, you know, I was in production mode. I really wish I could have enjoyed it as more at the game, but... You know, like going to the after party, like we went to like Chickie and Pete's, who were like awful to us, by the way. Like the servers were awful to us. <laughs> so That's another story. I hope they're not a sponsor. Of your party. Like, <laughs> just edit this out and like put in Applebee's or something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we've got, oh, they chanted my name. Everyone chanted yeah. my name when I arrived to Chickie yeah, and Pete's. And it was like the greatest moment of my life. And I realized like instantly, I was like, this is not going to happen again. Like, you yeah. know, this is like my peers chanting my name as I arrived to. I was like, I was so happy I was late, too. I was like, what did I, if I got there, I was the first one there, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Oh. So, uh, like many of my stories, it's going to start real negative, but get real positive at the end. So, uh, a running joke with me is I'm old. And during the Attitude Era, uh, which is like, probably I'd say about 1999, so it was my junior year of high school, uh, my relationship with my dad actually was fairly bad um and which is weird because if anyone knew me back then my dad and i were super tight growing when i was growing up 
up until high school and then things just kind of fell apart. And one of the only things that we had in common was pro wrestling. My, I'm a fourth generation pro wrestling fan. My great grandmother, her daughter-in-law, my grandmother, and my dad, me, all wrestling fans. So luckily at that time, wrestling was on almost every single night of the week. And that was the one thing my dad and I could talk about without ever arguing about or there being any sort of drama or anything. Um, so that was the best thing wrestling ever gave to me. Because every single, every no matter how much we argued or how bad things got between us, every night at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night, peace would happen because my dad and I would sit down and watch wrestling and all we would do was talk about wrestling. And from that, it really changed our relationship because it grew from there. So from watching Monday Night Raw and Nitro, ECW and everything else, literally Sunday mornings after church, we would watch ECW hardcore TV that I would tape and we would talk about it. And from there, wrestling allowed us to grow, not just as father and son, but as friends. And that really changed our dynamic. I wasn't just the little boy anymore. I was, I was growing up and my dad finally was realizing that. And we used to, because of that, we would go to indie shows together, like ring of honor and the Murphy rec center and Jersey all pro and the raw, raw way rec center. We went to a lot of rec centers for a while is what I'm saying. Even the ECW arena at one point, um, there was a certain indie wrestler who I was interviewing that invited my dad and I to go to a strip club with him and all the boys from Jersey All Pro. I will leave that <laughs> member of the hit squad nameless. But it was also weird when some he's like, hey, you guys want to come to a strip club? And I looked at my dad and my dad looked at me and we're like, nope, that's <laughs> really weird. Uh, but like, listen, hit squad member, I really appreciate that. You can infer who that is from there. Um, but that's what we did. We would go to these shows, and then we would go to a diner afterwards. We would talk about our favorite matches. And then after our favorite matches, we would talk about life. So wrestling was a way that my dad, who passed so actually his 10-year anniversary of his passing was earlier in July. That's how we became closer than ever, is because of wrestling. He would message me about shows that would happen literally down the street from our house at the Inman sports complex with ring of honor that we should go see it. Or he would text me about Monday night raw or email me about raw or TNA or something like that. And that is how our relationship, which was terrible at one point, we couldn't talk about anything without arguing. Where at what I, and then grew into a much more full relationship. And he, one day confided to me why it was so bad, you know, and then like these things like, but it was pro wrestling that allowed us to get to that level. And I don't, and I don't know why, but it's just like, there's something about wrestling because it's of the sport and of the drama that you can talk about it in so many different ways. And he would get excited. I would watch him get excited about certain wrestlers. And I would get excited about certain wrestlers. We talk and debate that talk and debate really formed the rest of our relationship because that allowed us to talk about whether it was wrestling or sports or life or religion or my relationships I had with, with my future wife, you know, like it, 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 it set the basis for that. And that's why I will never, I will never not watch pro wrestling. That's why I will never, I can never thank pro wrestling enough for giving my relationship with my dad a new chapter. Because had it not, I don't, I don't know what would have happened. And uh, it, it made us not only a better father and son, but it made us the best of friends. And that was what was really cool about pro wrestling. And, and you know, it's helped me out in so many ways where I, when I was down at my lowest times, I could always lean back on it. But nothing will ever um, match how it helped me and my dad. And uh, it was always been my best friend, my hero, the guy I've always looked up to. So 
I can never thank pro wrestling enough for that. Oh, I love that. It's such a great story. Right. Oh, no, don't cry. Don't cry. That's such a great story. No, it's okay. <laughs> I feel I'm like... Not, I, just, I just drowned the tears with alcohol. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine, guys. I'm fine. It's a great story. No, it's such a good story. Oh, thank you for sharing this story. Um. So, as Tiffany knows, um, got involved in the wrestling community with my daughter. She's 14 years old. Um, she has cerebral palsy and a seizure disorder and some other cognitive and neurological delays. Um, and she became interested in wrestling on TV, but really wasn't into it, into it until we went to a community, um, a community fair and saw UWA wrestling. And she was hooked at that point. Um, and a big piece of that was that, um, Ryan, who's one of the referees there, had come over and talked to her, and she just thought that was great. Um, and we've kind of been on that journey into wrestling ever since. <laughs> um, she now wears a referee jersey to every show she goes to. Don't tell her that she shouldn't. <laughs> Even if you are going to five shows in five days, she will wear her referee jersey to every show. <laughs> um, and what was really cool was the first time that she wore her referee jersey to a UWA show, um, Ryan actually got her into the ring and <laughs> let her do a count with him in the ring during one of the intermissions, which was really neat. Um, I always say one of the best things I think about being part of the wrestling community for Azalea is that everyone there really treats her like Azalea rather than in a lot of places where she kind of gets treated like a child with a disability versus people seeing her for who she is. Um, when we're at shows, whether it's the wrestlers, whether it's the referees, whether it's the announcers, people come up and talk to her rather than talking to her through me, which is usually what happens. Um, so it's, kind of neat to have that interaction for her um, that she's kind of really seen and I think that's a big piece of it that she's she's treated just like any other kid or teenager at a wrestling show which is cool um, but then also in some ways she gets I don't know the word but she gets a little bit extra attention sometimes which is nice for her too um so I think that's a big piece of it. Uh, I think as a parent, that's a big piece of it for me, is seeing her being seen for who she is. Um, I know one person had come up at one point and said, I really love her big personality, which to me is completely who she is. But that's not usually what I get when we go places. I get, oh, she's so cute, or, or things like that, which is not her personality. <laughs> Yeah. So I think just people really enjoying her and allowing her to enjoy events is great. Oh. Um, so I think that's a big piece of it for me. For her, she just enjoys interacting with everyone, um, which there's so many people to interact with at a wrestling <laughs> event. She thinks it's great. Um, it's nice she to see definitely, that. yep. She's definitely taken a liking to anyone who is wearing a referee jersey or has microphones. Yep. If you have a microphone, she is going to come talk to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she definitely enjoys that. Um, and one, one other great thing for her is um, Shane Fair, who's one of the ring announcers at several of the promotions that we've gone to, um, Though is that she enjoys microphones and that she has a microphone collection at home. So he got her several microphones <laughs> um, to add to her collection. But Some you've... mini microphones, which are her favorite things on the face of the earth. She will carry them around for days. Um, so she thoroughly enjoys that. <laughs> um, 
I love it. I've seen it. There's so many. There's <laughs> different seen. sizes. There's different colors. Like they are all over our house. And yeah. they have a spot in her room that they stay in until she wants to carry specific ones all around the house. <laughs> uh, and then sometimes pretend to announce things that are going on on TV. <laughs> and to see her at the shows, too, with it. Or oh, yeah. Even, yeah. even uh, like, Shade or, or somebody else is like gives her a mic, like, at the show, which is just great. They're just lucky the mic drop hasn't happened because that happens at home. Mic drop. <laughs> you, you may not want to give her a hot mic, please. <laughs> no. She may drop it. <laughs> um, but they know, like, just those kind of interactions have been really cool for her. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. <laughs> she definitely has certain wrestlers that she's taken a liking to more than a... Not, shouldn't say more than others, but certain ones that she definitely has taken a very strong liking to. Um, and you always know which ones they are because the other thing that I didn't say at the beginning is she is deaf. She uses ASL as her communication. Um, and in the deaf community, when you have interactions with people or relationships with people, they get sign names. So a specific sign that is used for that specific person. Um, and there are a handful of wrestlers, probably somewhere around eight or ten um, wrestlers or referees or announcers who have their own sign names now. Um, because she wants to be able to talk about them when she's at home. Or she wants to be able to ask if she's going to see them at a show that we're going to. <laughs> um, so that's, <laughs> that's always cool. And the way she develops her sign names is really fun. Um, so <laughs> you never know what someone's sign name is going to be until she comes up with one. So I know that, uh, what was it? Ro which one's Ryan again? Ryan's is this. <laughs> because they took a picture one time and this was the pose that they did. So that became his sign name. Ooh, sorry, and, and cat ran into the camera. Shane, Shane's another one that has a sign name, right? Yeah, Shane's is this with a microphone. <laughs> uh, Joey Sweet Cheeks is this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean ktv is this kind of you know just makes you know, sense yeah <laughs> that's great um but yeah so she's come up with sign names about people that she wants to talk about vertigo's is this because that's how he comes out um so she kind of picks up on little things that different people do and she'll give them sign names depending on that uh, and you, you know that she likes you and she wants to be able to see you when she develops the sign name because she wants to talk about you. Aww, um, and I will say there are probably more people in the wrestling community that have sign names than anywhere else that we go that she has given to. She doesn't give sign names to many people. I know. I don't got one yet. I'm kind of I'm kind of oh, a little oh. upset. Um, you're a female. Females do not get sign names. Damn it! <laughs> she only gets sign names to males. Even outside of the wrestling community, in her baseball league, she only gives signs to males. Damn it. These are Azalea, uh, quirks. Yes. I love it, though. But... It's funny, like, we're talking about this, and it's kind of, there's a partial reason I want you to tell this story. Because it kind of triggered this wrestling with positivity. Um, so it's kind of like a, a fallback with me and Melissa a little bit. So here, let me start the story. Go ahead. You but start. I'm going to start the story. So just... Uh, this one is going to be an anonymous story because they don't want to be known. We get it. Totally understand. Uh, because it was kind of really meant for Azalea. Um, and they just want not to be known. But it's such a great story that kind of triggered this, again, the wrestling with positivity. Uh, pretty much Azalea had a birthday coming up. And I thought what would be great is to get a bunch of autographs for her for her birthday that we would pin it up uh for because her, her party theme not surprisingly was wrestling right 
And with that being said, I, I hit up a lot of wrestlers and I got a lot of eight by tens. And uh, this this one wrestler uh, wanted to do something more for her. So we went to a show, me and Melissa, and this wrestler told me, uh, you know, when you go to a show, let me know when you're going because I have something for Azalea. So I was like, OK, so I, I get to the show and you know, I message the wrestler and they tell me to, you know, come downstairs or whatever. So I, I went downstairs and they came outside and I thought it was really, really cool because, like I said, they gave me a story that I'll never forget. It's not even my kid. And it was just a story that, again, sparked this whole thing and came out with their first in-ring robe that they ever wore. I I wanted to cry because I couldn't believe somebody did this, you know, for somebody else. Like, how, how special. And for me to, like, come up, like, besides the fact that I gave them a gigantic hug and I was like, you just <laughs> gave me something that I'll always remember, uh, you know, and to do it for, like, my friend's kid and everything was even more special. So, but for me to come upstairs and... Give it to Melissa and Azalea. Like. And she was so excited. Yeah. Like, she knows who it's from. She completely knows who it's from. And when we got home and she put it on and she wanted to take pictures and she thought it was the coolest thing. <laughs> the little which thing. was really neat. I don't yeah. think she completely understands just how special it is. Yeah. But she knows how cool and special yeah. it is, if that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> it def definitely is. That are just, again, th these stories need to be brought to light. And this was something important to me. And so it being a podcaster and working even behind the scenes sometimes, like I know a lot of stories, but to bring this to you guys out here so you guys can hear some of these stories, it's it's a lot. So... But. Yeah, and I know T Tiffany knows one of my other fun stories is last year for Halloween, Azalea would not come up with a costume. She kept to, I don't know what I want to be. I don't know what I want to be. I don't know what I want to be. Okay, fine. You don't know what you want to be. The year before, she was a referee. Shock. <laughs> <laughs> but we had gone the weekend before Halloween to a show. And we come home, and she goes, I want to be Joey Sweet Cheeks for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> the weekend before Halloween. <laughs> which which led me throwing together uh, an outfit, including jumping on Amazon and finding a jacket. <laughs> which, if anyone knows Sweet Cheeks jacket, <laughs> it is something else. Yeah. <laughs> it is furry and white. <laughs> <laughs> and she completely headband, jacket, same color pants. She thought it was the greatest thing to dress up like him for Halloween. And so did Joey. Uh, <laughs> and so did Joey. <laughs> I remember seeing that like post. I, I told him he was going to have a doppelganger for Halloween. There you go. Now she got a. And yes. she showed up at one of the shows wearing the stuff, right? She did. She showed up at the show after Halloween at the UWA show uh, after Halloween dressed up in the same basically the same gear that he has <laughs> and they took pictures together I and it is moments. just the cutest thing these are the moments that are everything like it's just everything you never know whose day you make yep so on. and i think sometimes the kids make their days just as much as they make the kids days yeah i think like, so I think it's a little bit of everything <laughs> Can you tell, me, tell us some about the role of positivity in professional wrestling? I mean, all you have to do is look at the New Day and you can think about the power of... No, seriously, uh, they're a great bunch of guys and they have a good message and I'm like that. Um, professional wrestling has gone through 
a lot of growing pains over the last few decades, especially recently um, with the Me Too movement and the Speaking Out movement and things like that. So when I got back into pro wrestling, my goal versus how I was in my first iteration was to make sure that those up and coming workers, the young kids that were starting to realize their dream and training and stuff like that, didn't develop any kind of arrogance or obnoxiousness about themselves and their fellow workers. Um, I've tried to be a little more of a mentor and things like that, as well as helping to kind of steer them into a more practical approach to things where as good as you are, there's always something to learn, there's always something new to be gained, there's learning and making mistakes. You don't have to be perfect all of the time. And also you need to be cordial and appreciative to the people who help you, not only behind the scenes but in the ring and to the fans because if you do anything that becomes elevated, it's very easy to start to believe your own hype. And if you're not humble and you don't stay positive and you let the demons get into your head and start messing with you, things tend to go badly. Um, can you tell us about your kids and nieces and nephews in pro wrestling? So. Along the lines of trying to mentor and help the young generation of workers and stuff like that, I have what they call big dad energy. Um, I try to be a sounding board for them. I try to be someone they could talk to, someone they can come to if they have problems. Um, for the male or male bodied wrestlers, it's a little bit more about instruction and such. Um, asking questions, offering suggestions, things like that. And they become my sons or my nephews, um, which is a lot of fun and throws a lot of people off. Um, which is even funnier because based on their age versus my age, it's kind of feasible that they are my kids. Um, for my daughters and my nieces and stuff like that, Along those lines as well, there's also the being able to be there in case those with ill intent or uncomfortable energy show up. And my job as the dad figure or the uncle figure is to make sure that everyone stays protected and everyone is safe, not only in the rink but outside the rink. Isn't that right, Lady Moss? What you can't see is there's a dog out of frame. Yeah, she's there. And can you talk a little bit about how, how that sort of comes into play or how it even started? So, working through the scene around the southern New England area and such like that, um, I met a young woman who was able to come to me in a time when I was not doing so well with being positive about where I stood. Um, and during the course of our relationship and our being friends and stuff, she would do this fun little thing where I would be wrestling and suddenly you would hear someone shout out, that's my dad. Um, and it ended up being her. And because of that, she became known as my daughter. I was the dad and then I gained more and more children, and it's become a thing, which I enjoy immensely and love every one of them as my own. Uh, can you tell us about the Spandex Squad? How did it start? What's the idea behind it? Uh, so the Spandex Squad um, is basically, <laughs> bless you, is my version of what Make-A-Wish does. Um, I like to do things for kids. 
not just the kids in wrestling, but the wrestling fans who are younger, the children and stuff like that. My whole shtick, gimmick, persona is being a superhero and showing you that there are things that can be done where you don't have to cheat to win. Um, the Spandex Squad started when a friend of mine reached out and told me about a little boy uh, who was born with a heart defect and he was basically stuck in a hospital waiting for a heart donor because his was not functioning properly. Um, so I spoke to a couple of the other workers who were in and about the different wrestling promotions that I am with and I said hey and I gave him the situation and I was like they've told me he's a really big wrestling fan and it's something we can do to bring a little bit of joy to somebody's not so good life at the moment so with the help of my friends Dick Lane and Asana the Suplex Sweetheart and Sid Morgan we went to the Boston Children's Hospital to visit a young man who really needed to pick me up and we have pictures and such and that child's face just glowed um, and it was such a well received response from him from his parents and from the rest of the workers that uh, I had had people reach out to me and ask that the next time I do that to let them know because they absolutely want to be a part of it. Unfortunately, COVID happened, so we haven't been able to do it since, but that's okay. It's going to happen again. Okay, so um, basically in the beginning of my career, I had somebody reach out to me, I think a father, asking if he could get a free 8x10 for his daughter that had a disability. First time that I've ever even interacted with a parent or even somebody that had a disability, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was just very touched. I'm like, I'm a little 8x10, I get it. But to have the dad reach out to wrestlers, like, on their Facebook, like, hey, my daughter loves wrestling. Daughter. Like, oh, my heart goes out to that. But then when I saw that um, a lot of people, okay, first of all, a lot of people just love wrestling in general. I totally, I just love that. But to see our hardcore fans that have disabilities, we acknowledge them. You know, we, you are all just like us. And they make it out to the shows with their parents, their whole squad. It touches my heart. And I think it touched my heart more that when I saw your story on Facebook about what you were doing with this podcast, I was like, yo... I have to say something or I have to just acknowledge even the wrestlers that acknowledge them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, one of them is Smiley that I wanted to acknowledge. And a lot of the House of Glory um, kids, students, the ones from New York, shout out to House of Glory. But, yo, they're the ones that go in the crowd, interact with them, sit with them, talk with them. Um, I met people from House of Glory when I was in Excellence Pro Wrestling, which is based out of Sellersville, Pennsylvania. And literally during their matches, they would jump in the crowd and sit with them and, you know, be like, hey, did you see that? And like, I, I felt like they were doing more. They were doing what they were supposed to. They didn't have to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, I want to be like them. I don't know why, but I was like, yo, I want to be like them. I don't want to just give my attention to the people that give me money or, you know, I'm selling merch and just come to the table. No, everybody's a, a fan for wrestling, but I want to get more out to the people that 
maybe have mobility issues or whatever, but they still made it out there. And, you know, one of them was Smiley. Like, Smiley is a hardcore lover. He he is a smile in, in, in himself. <laughs> and uh, Ken Broadway, too. And, of course, Max. Like, I have a picture of Maddie, like, in the crowd, jumping in the crowd and, like, dabbing a fan. And he was in a wheelchair. And I was just like, yo, that's mad love. <laughs> um, you know, my heart just like it opened up even more for all of us performers. You know, I have a soft spot because I have a brother that is autistic, he can't go out too much. He can't go. It's like a really good, bright place in my heart to see us performers like acknowledging them you know yeah it's such a beautiful thing it's funny because it's like i hear a lot of that and i physically see a lot of a lot of those stories where where the wrestlers and i've seen it and just like like you said smiley a lot of house glory i've seen it physically at a bunch of shows so it's such a beautiful thing Aww. yeah even casey like i don't see i'm not saying i don't see enough girls doing it but casey it one that has a very big heart. Um, I'm not gonna lie, usually I'm in the back, like just hibernating sometimes, but no, I get a priority to like back more. Like, hey, what's up? You made it out here. Yep. You, out of everyone, you, you brought your whole family, you brought your whole gift with you. <laughs> I love that. Like, I go home thinking about that over and over. And when I saw your post, I was like, I gotta get on this. Like, <laughs> oh no, I appreciate that you came on and told us a little bit about, you know, your experience and even you seeing and it's just it's just a beautiful thing. So I can't thank you enough. What's up everyone? My name is referee Ryan T and I am a professional wrestling referee on the independence. Many companies I work for, such as GCW, ICW Knowles Bard, UWE Elite, House of Hardcore, uh Standalone wrestling, the list goes on and on and on. You might have seen me referee sometimes, but you also may have seen me running uh, toy drives and supply drives for the Valley Funds Camp Happy Times. Camp Happy Times is a camp for kids who have or had cancer and or blood disorders. At the age of four years old, I personally was diagnosed with leukemia, and I won my battle at the age of seven. And from that age, I've always wanted to just keep giving back to the community and uh, benefit each year, I try to give back. And the way I do it is by doing these supply drives and toy drives for the Valley Funds Camp Happy Times. Um, it, this year at UWA Elite, we did a supply drive and raised over 900 supplies for the camp, for Camp Happy Times, That's which which is amazing. I, thank you enough. I can't thank you enough, UWA Elite, for doing that. Um, that's one of my homes. That's one of my main home companies where I start off from, from the get-go. Uh, but yeah, uh, I had my battle. I just want to constantly give back. And you're really motivated by these camp, uh, these campers. Um, when camp was in person this this year, just uh, was two weeks ago. It was virtual. Went over very well. Very great camp. Um, of course, in person has more meaning. Uh, you know, campers get to understand that they're not the only one who may have battled or is battling. And it could be myself. I can say that can say, hey, I was a camper, I, and also I was. I was battling at one time too. You can do this, you know, motivate them, but they also motivate you more. You know, like you see a kid do a rock climb wall that uh, may have a missing a limb due to cancer or something along those lines, and uh, it really motivates you. You know, to keep it, keep pushing forward. If, if you ever have like a down time, just keep moving forward. Keep stay strong. Like no doubt, stay strong at all times. Because uh, don't let people tell you the sky's the limit if the if there's footprints on the moon, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's one of the lessons, uh, quotes and lessons I go by. Um, and then at these camps, like it's, the camp is totally paid for, uh, from, from donations over in, over in Tyler Hill, Pennsylvania. And, uh, I even have the camp logo, this logo right here tattooed on my back. That's how much it means to me. Me and a few of my uh, other friends who were counselors there. Uh, and, uh, we all have the same tattoo. Uh, this place means a lot to me, and I, I can't thank the entire wrestling community for constantly wanting to give back and see how much it means to me. Uh, it means a lot, 
<laughs> really means a lot. And um, September's coming up, and I will be doing something. Not sure what exactly yet, but it, uh, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, where you go gold for uh, uh, for Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And I'll probably be rocking like a, the gold ribbon on my referee sneakers and or shirt throughout the entire month of September. Maybe I'll raffle off. So either way, I just want to thank everyone who's ever given back to the Rally Fund, who's ever even shared a tweet or Instagram post or whatever whatever case may be uh, from the Valley Funds Camp Happy Times. Uh, it really means a lot to me. I know I keep saying that, but it's totally true. And, um, from the bottom of my heart, it really means a lot. This I, I love this, and I want to constantly just keep giving back because uh, there's people out there who need it, and the wrestling community is very awesome. And I just want to say thank you again to all the companies, all the talent, everyone who's ever given back to the Valley Funds Camp Happy Times. This means the world to me, and uh, I hope everyone has a great day, have a great week, great month, great year, and uh, thank you, Tiffany, for having me uh, on to discuss what I do for the community with my pro wrestling stage. Thank you, and have an awesome, 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 awesome year, and stay awesome. So in June of 2017, VOW presented a show called Zero F's Given, and it was there that I met my friends Ashley and Dylan Morris. Ashley came up to me at intermission and said it was their first time they brought their son Connor to a wrestling show. And his favorite wrestler was Connor Claxton and he'd really like a birthday wish from Connor Claxton. I walked into the locker room, I grabbed Connor, I told him what the deal was. And he picks Connor up and brings him into the ring and says, what's your name? And they go through the whole thing and Connor goes, all right. When I say go, I want everybody in the building to sing happy birthday to my new friend, John. <laughs> to which we all yelled, Connor, his name's Connor, come on. Connor said, I get hit in the head a lot. We all sang happy birthday to Connor. And he had a really good birthday. And Ashley and Dylan and Connor and I have been cool ever since. Well, with, I, we all know I, I'm Val's mom first and foremost. <laughs> and uh, I think that's what wrestling mostly brought to us was like a, a bigger family for Val. It was like I was telling you before, like in the real world, the stinky real world, like not everybody pays attention to my kid. But when we go to a wrestling show, he is like the champ. They, they chant his name. They love him. They treat him like a normal kid, you know, and for a mom who has a special needs kid, it's yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start crying already. No, don't cry. Don't cry. It this is so, happy. It means so much to, to have people just acknowledge your kid. You know, and we've had so much with through his surgeries. I have to mention Mike and Allie, who are amazing. And now they went to stupid Florida. But, like, they every time he's had surgery, they Allie's sending him autographed pictures, handwritten letters, hope you get better. The last time you guys and Casey and Brandon sent, I mean, like these people that I've only met maybe a few times, some of them in the, in the wrestling community, some of them I've known, you know, like the last time he was in the hospital, I got more phone calls and texts and just support from so many friggin' people. I mean, all over Facebook was my kid's picture with everybody just, it's wishing him well and praying for him that he was going to get better. Yeah, that and was that, nice. It, it means everything to you, you know? I mean, it's it's crazy. I got more people in the wrestling community than my own immediate fam you know, family that were concerned and really cared. Wow. So with all the crap out there, I only get the good. We, you know, we've gotten a lot of the good. You know? I, I want to talk about even <laughs> some of the, like, the shows. Like, I mean, that's so great. I mean, I love seeing that as well, like, on social media, that people are posting pictures with Val, like, while you're in the hospital. But let's talk about, like, a little bit about when you're at shows and, oh like, God. some of the stuff we're that goes on. Shows. Well, see, I'm, I'm at the, ca the camera. <laughs> I'm at the <laughs> side now so all i'm doing is but i'll look all over and there he is with somebody or like when vicky goes to the the last her last match when she went to the ring she went over and gave him a hug and a kiss like that means more to me than anything in the world to see to see him part of it and his face lights up when everybody comes by him 
You know, it's amazing. And my daughter's involved in it now. They've allowed my daughter into this crazy world where, you know, she's a part of everything. Right. right. You know, and that's in this crazy world right now, you know, to be a part of what I don't care if people are like, oh, wrestling family, that's such BS. No, for us, it's real. Like Vicky was just at my house today. She took my Bella to karate. Like, we have extended family now through wrestling that, like, I never had before. I had a bunch of kids I never knew I had. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so and they, they just accept us, you know, and they, for what we are, which, you know, yeah. accept my son for how he is. It doesn't, it's hard to explain if you're not living it. You know, because people don't understand. Like, like I said, when we go places, when we go out to the store, people don't even hold the door for you pushing your kid in a wheelchair. Yeah. Like, it's just the world is cruel most of the time. Yeah. We go to a freaking wrestling show, and they are so good to us. I, my son gets more high fives, more hugs, more. How are you, Val? <laughs> like, they're so good to him. I don't. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> it's hard to explain. You know, you see it because you're I there. See, yeah. You've seen what it's like. Yeah. And it's amazing. Like there's so many, and at our at our shows, at the Titan shows, there are we have a couple like Down syndrome children and handicapped children, autistic children that come frequently to the shows, and to see the interaction with the wrestlers and those kids that they see at every show and they know we're gonna be there. And like they do silly stuff or sit in their lap or something. And to see the kids, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if the wrestlers realize how much that kid will talk about that for a week. Yeah. A month. Yeah. You know, like it means so much to those kids and to the families. You don't even, I don't know if they, gra if the wrestlers quite grasp that. And I hope they do. And I want to thank every single one of them who does it for these kids because. The real world doesn't give them that. Yeah. Most of the time. Oh, I want you to share the story you just shared with me off air about uh, the toy being sent over to Valve. Oh yeah, yeah. Tommy Wrestling, 80s Wrestling Store Con, whatever. This I don't even know the name of the store. I'm so bad. He's gonna be like, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but he had had Jake the Snake on, and Val had been to the hospital on his birthday. I think it was around his birthday time too, and uh. Tommy texted me and he's like, I want to send Val something. What's his favorite wrestler? And I'm like, well, you just had Jake on. I said, we freaking love Jake in this house. So literally he had had one of those plush dolls of Jake the Snake that Jake had signed. And I have, but I saw him, I was watching it while the guy, he was signing because I love Jake the Snake. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. He sent it to Val. He sent it to him in the mail. Like he didn't have to do that. Oh we he get Val gets stuff from all over the he's gotten stuff from guys all over the country that will just text me and I sometimes I'm, I guess I shouldn't give my address to everybody but I kind of <laughs> do <laughs> but like is that okay and I'm like well, what are they gonna do and like he's gotten cards autographs the little baseball cards of people I mean all sorts of stuff simply splendid made him a robe they come out in their purple robes and they made him a purple robe oh. so he has the robe. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, my goodness. It, it, it's crazy, and it's amazing what everybody has done for us in this community and, you know, welcomed us, you know, and gave us a place where we can fit in. <laughs> no, it's amazing. Oh, my goodness. And, again, like, me being so involved in the indies and the wrestling community and everything and to physically watch this, but I don't think a lot of people realize what goes on behind the scenes a lot exactly. so to like physically yeah. see that i like you said also like the extended family i don't think a lot of people also realize like the friendships that expand exactly i come from it yeah it's, it's amazing like i said vicky's at my god she's probably at my house every day <laughs> <laughs> she's like my child now but i and i we support her just like she supports us you know i mean it becomes like it is a fan. It, it, I don't care what anybody says. For us, it is like a family. Billy called. I was in the hospital. Billy, owner of Titan, literally every single day was calling me, checking on Val every day, making sure he was okay. Do you need me to come to the hospital and bring you anything? Aww. Like people who were in the area where when we were in Philly, texting me. You know, I'm. I live here. Do you want it? Do you not want me to just bring you coffee? Aww. I mean, it's it's insane. It really is that like. I never expected 
any of this when we went to our first show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you hear and me? it just, it, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love them all. Oh, that's so sweet. I just can't. <laughs> I think, yeah. I, and again, I think. I, like, we've met each other once. I think we met at Val's Pals was it. Yeah. 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 And that was like, but I love you. Yeah. Like, I consider you fan, part of the family, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. And I think also that people don't realize as well is like whether wrestlers are a face or a heel like i mean again it's just a character and sometimes right. like those heels like they're not really like that behind the scenes and just like wonderful things that even like happen with but they, and they, but they can be a heel sometimes right. but it's so funny too like val will come up and like chenzo will be like with his stapler gun and stuff and val will be, please bella made chenzo a bedazzled stapler gun like and Val was trying to like stable me with it. Like we, it's, <laughs> it's the interaction. Yeah. It's the whole thing. Just, you know, for us, wrestling is sanity. Mm -hmm. The insanity of it gives us sanity. Yes. You know, because our life is so crazy. But when we go there, when we're at a wrestling show, we're not thinking about any of that other stuff. Right. It's that is all you're thinking about is, you know, who's going to kick the crap out of who. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Val's like screaming. We put on. Oh, please! That's a great story. He has talkers now. Val on his wheelchair. Uh -huh. So we put on it the last. Well, the last show he was at before he went to the hospital. We put on it. You suck, and yay or something. Well, I didn't change it. And he went to school on Monday morning and told his teacher she sucked. <laughs> wrestling brings to our life. and of course all the kids in his class thought it was hilarious and i'm like oh, i'm sorry that was wrestling <laughs> <laughs> but that's fun and that's the great things and that's what we love like yeah, again but he gets to be a kid you know yeah. he's still a teen boy you know he should be doing crap like that telling his teacher to go to heck you know? <laughs> <laughs> i can't oh my god i i swear i can't like thank you enough for this like the wrestlers and everybody part of the wrestling community, like we thank you for the things you. Exactly. You I do. thank every single one of you for who's come over to my kid, said hi to who, everybody who sent him things. I mean, none of you have to do that. We have Val. Literally, we did wrestling shirt of the day, and we got into like fifty some days. If I did it now, I could probably go for because we have so many. Not that we don't buy them, we do buy the shirts too. Yeah. But he gets tons. Like people are just like here. Yeah, you know, and good thing he wears the same size as mom, so. <laughs> <laughs> I get the bonus of wearing them, too. There you go. Story time. I can tell you just about every single worker in this business has had a negative reaction with fans, whether it's through DMs or it's in person. But, you know, I, I'd rather focus on some positive stuff. I'd rather po focus on some positive fan interactions. So I know a couple fans in New Jersey, Chucky and Chloe Ireland. Chucky's dead, Chloe's his daughter. Honestly, I wish all wrestling fans were like them because wrestling would be a whole lot better because of it. They love pro wrestling, they love all the wrestlers, they follow them, they support them, they buy their merch, everything. Uh, and they're just, they're just really good people. About two months ago, roughly, uh, Chucky's dad passed away. So, Chucky lost his dad, Chloe lost her grandfather. It was a few days before a show that they were planning on attending at Titan Championship Wrestling. I was on the card. And uh, no one would have blamed them if they didn't come. Because obviously that was something that's really devastating to lose a family member like that. But, pro wrestling has this way of getting people to forget about any pain or sorrow or suffering that they are dealing with. And they came to the show anyway. And a uh, guy I know gave me an idea of something that to give back to pro wrestling, give back to them, make them have a memory and a moment that they'll, they'll never forget and help them for, forget about what they were going through was, and I was wrestling Ray Kalitri. We all know that he'll win by any means necessary, so it wouldn't be unheard of if the referee got hurt or incapacitated in the match. So this guy I knew, he, uh, he said, listen, if the referee gets incapacitated in any way, you should have Chloe get in the ring and count for three for you. You know, if you're 
if you're up and you're winning, call her in, have her come in. And uh, lo and behold, the referee was incapacitated, he was hurt, Kalichi was trying to win by any means necessary, didn't happen, dropped him, went for the cover, there's no referee, Kali was right there, right in the right in the front row, and I called her in, and she counted, one, two, three. The smile on that kid's face, and the smile on her dad's face on in the front row was, uh, that's, that's, that, uh, honestly, it makes you feel really good when you get to do that. It's like I said, everybody deals with negativity in wrestling, and wrestling can, can be very toxic, but this was not one of those moments, and this is, uh, you know, the smile on this kid's face when she raised my hand and then I raised hers was like, it was, you know, that was nothing better than seeing that. So that's... shirt so I had a frontless shirt at that point and I was trying to figure out what to do with it and I thought well my son couldn't make it to the show and him and Grant were close believe it or not uh, you know he didn't really like kids at all but so I just asked all the wrestlers you know if they would mind signing the shirt and um, that was the result I don't know how many people were there total but I got like 20 to 25 signatures Marcus Payne, Kid Osborne, Nothing Face, G Raver, Chondo, Bulldozer, Devin Moore, Chip Payne, RSP, Lucky, Neil, all them guys. But they're some of the greatest guys in the world. All of them.